Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper and this video has been a long time coming. I hope you can see that up there. That's my great solar 160 watt solar panel and for those of you who follow the channel I mounted that last summer and have been slowly working on my solar system since then. Well today I'm pleased to report with some help from a buddy from work I was able to commission and activate my solar system this weekend. We finally got it done. We came out here to the retreat location and put a new charge controller in. We got the battery box mounted, fuses mounted, inverter mounted, and we are now operational. And my configuration here, and this is not a how-to video. It'd probably be better described as a what not to do video because I made a lot of mistakes along the way and this journey has definitely been a learning curve for me. So I have the 160 watt panel up there on the roof. On the back side of the house there's a penetration going through two 90s that goes down into the attic space and my charge controller and disconnect is in the master bedroom there and that goes down into my crawl space where the inverter is mounted and then I drilled holes through my block and there's a battery box under my deck here and I apologize for the mess and all the mud but it was raining yesterday and in the battery box I have two Trojan T105 RE batteries with plans to put another two and the RE stands for renewable energy I'm going to change positions here with the camera and show you the different components of my solar system and there's a lot of different ways of doing it but I'm going to document what I did here and of course all my mistakes because there were plenty of them show you how I got to the point where we are today we're able to commission a system now I'm presenting the components of the system kind of out of sequence if you're looking at it from a block diagram of an electrical system or a schematic. Uh, I'm doing this for ease of videoing. So the first thing we're looking at here is the battery box. Like I said I have two Trojan T105RE and the RE stands for renewable energy flooded lead acid batteries which means they vent hydrogen gas when they're charging so you have to be able to get that gas out of the house. Now I know some people put them inside and put pipes to vent them but I opted to put the batteries outside I got a donated cement slab there, 24 inches by 36, from a neighbor who had an air conditioner compressor on that. And when he renovated his house, he donated that slab for me. So I put that down there to put the box on. The box is plywood. There's styrofoam insulation. And I'll show you the inside of the box. I have screws on the top lid to bolt it down with a gasket. And the idea behind that is to keep the critters out, and more importantly, all the stink bugs we have up here in West Virginia. I have four vent holes in the box. I have two in the top for the hydrogen gas to get out. And on the bottom, on each side, I have vents to let fresh air in at the bottom. And the vents are three inch soffit vents that I got from Home Depot with a heavy screen mesh stapled over them to keep the critters from chewing their way in the box. So I'll pause here, get that box open, and I'll show you what's inside the battery box. Here's one of the soffit vents on the side and that's a metal screen mesh stapled over the top to keep the critters from chewing their way in and the box sits pretty flush up against the house up against the block so I shouldn't get too many critters maybe some bugs back in there but there's not a lot of room for snakes or groundhogs and stuff to get in there and then we'll come across the top of the box and I have one vent there and another vent over there and I have bolts coming up here to hold this lid down and under that lid is gasket and my idea behind that is to tighten that down to keep the stink bugs and other insects from getting into them. on this side of the box I have another vent with the metal screen over it I have a main DC on off switch and this disconnects the power from the batteries going to the inverter in the crawl space so I drilled holes through that block and I'll show you that when I get inside there so I can turn my inverter on and off from out here under the deck when I get out here on the weekends without having to go into the crawl space. And then over here I have an independent ground for the system which goes inside and also comes back around and goes inside the battery box. So I'm going to take my wrench here and open up the box and show you the inside of the box now. Well, I hope you guys can see okay here in the box. There's not a lot of room under the deck but this is a 2x4 frame with plywood on the outside. I use styrofoam insulation to help regulate the temperature. I know I've got the vents in the bottom but I'm trying to minimize the extremes in the swing of temperature here with the insulation to help protect the longevity of the batteries. I have my charge controller inputs coming in from the crawl space which go up into the bedroom coming off the charge controller. And then below that I have number two copper wire 
going into the inverter. Now off the positive post of the battery, I have number two wire coming up here to the main on off switch, which then feeds back into the crawl space to turn the inverter on. And I'm using number two wire because I have a 1500 watt inverter and it can pull up to 150 amps of current at max. So you definitely don't want to undersize your wire. I'm not going to put the formula here or try to explain the math. You're going to have to do your own research if you're designing your own system. The size of wiring does matter when you start pulling a lot of current through your solar system. So this is the inside of the box and again the plan is to add two more batteries. Uh, keep it at a 24 volt system but increase my amp hour capacity and the amount of time I can run devices here on solar. So just a quick recap in the box. Again, we built this two weeks ago. It's somewhat insulated. We have vents in the bottom to bring fresh air in and then we have vents at the top to allow the hydrogen gas to escape because gas will vent out of these caps when it's charging and we want that gas to get out and I didn't want to have it inside the crawl space or in the house so that's the reason we put the box outside. So I'll go ahead and pause here and we'll get in the crawl space and I'll show you what's inside there. And one more thing on the battery box. My next trip to Home Depot, I'll be replacing those bolts with wing nuts. It's kind of a pain to get down here with the wrench. So I'll get some uh, large wing nuts that I can put on there so I can easily take the lid on and off as I need it. All right, guys, so I'm in what my kids call the creepy crawly space, the crawl space here at the retreat location. And there's my 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter and the connections to that go through the cinder block wall out to the battery box and it's a cool dry environment down here I have a dehumidifier and I have the crawl space encapsulated and with the exception of some dead stink bugs and ladybugs down here it's not that bad I had originally planned to put the batteries down here but I had concerns with venting the hydrogen gas and that's why I opted just to put the battery box outside better safe than sorry and because this is a pretty enclosed space the space is encapsulated the band or rim joist has all been spray foam to seal it up to keep bugs and critters out. So this is where we're going to put the inverter and battery box outside, charge controller upstairs. The one thing I do have to add is the temperature sensor for the batteries, but that'll be a separate video. So electrically what I have here is I have my output from the charge controller coming down. The positive lead goes through that fuse through the block into the battery box to charge the batteries. Coming out of the battery box, I have separate holes there, one for each wire, number two wire, because I can pull up to 150 amps from the batteries with the inverter. The positive and negative lead come out. The positive lead is fused as soon as I can with an A&L fuse there, and then into the inverter. And then I have AC power coming out of the side of the inverter. I apologize for the level of the inverter, but I didn't have the level with me and I was working on an angle, so it's a little tip there on the plywood board, but good enough. Here I can fix it with the magic of editing. How's that? There, it's, I'll tip the camera, now it's level. So that's the inverter. There's the inputs and outputs to the battery box. And then the plan here is, on another trip, is to put an outside outlet box up here, facing the outside, that will allow me to plug the inverter into my manual transfer switch. The final plan for the solar project here is to run the AC outlet power from the inverter in the crawl space here behind the sill plate and put an exterior outlet right here on the on the wall outside a weatherproof outlet with covers and then I can take a cord and plug into that AC power coming from the inverter and bring it right up here to my reliance manual generator transfer switch input plug and then I'll have the plug select the phases I want to power inside the house and then I can use the manual transfer switch to select which circuits in the house I want to run on solar and which circuits I want to keep on commercial so this gives me another power option I have commercial power right now I can plug the generator in here I will also have the option to plug my solar power also into the transfer switch and from inside the house, I can choose to run the TV outlets. I can choose to run the overhead lighting, or I can just run the refrigerator alone. And that gives me more options of how I want to use my solar and regulate my consumption. And that's the plan. So here's our retreat power system. Of course, I have my main circuit breaker panel connected to my commercial power. And for those of you who follow the channel, 
I installed a Reliance ProTrain six breaker manual generator transfer switch last summer. I still have to fix up the drywall. It's on the list. But this box here allowed me to select six of my most important circuit breakers out of this panel to run on a generator. And I have a video on it and I'll put a link down below. We did this last summer and I opted to do living room outlets, bedroom and bath lights, living room and kitchen lights, kitchen outlets, bedroom outlets, and kitchen and fridge outlet. So I have my six most important breakers on here and this allows me to go from commercial to generator by throwing this switch up like that. And the generator of course is plugged into that plug that I showed you outside but the plan with the solar is I can also feed that plug with the solar system. Now I won't have the same capacity so I'll only be able to select one or two of these circuits when I'm running solar but as I need power throughout the day or the evening, I can pick and choose what I want to have running on solar versus commercial power. And in an emergency, if there's no commercial power, then I can still pick and choose based on priority. So maybe it's late in the evening, we just want to have the living room lights on. Uh, maybe it's earlier in the evening and we need to run the refrigerator because we're going to be cooking. I can put the refrigerator on solar. But when it's chilled down, then I can turn the refrigerator off and run something else. So that's the concept behind this, is to use the generator transfer switch to choose a la carte what devices I want to run from my solar, or if I want to run it from the generator, just to give me more options. Here's the actual system I installed, and this was definitely a learning curve. I made a lot of mistakes here, so this is not a how-to video. If better described, like I said, is a what not to do. This is my third charge controller. Uh, my first charge controller was too small. My second charge controller was a Renogy MPPT 40 amp charge controller. And I'll insert a picture here through editing to show you what that was. And as I was getting ready to put together my battery maintenance protocols, because I have flooded lead acid batteries and they need to be maintained at least once a month, I discovered that the Trojan T105RE had different voltage settings that the charge controller did not support. The Trojan T105RE batteries, there's three voltages of concern and there's voltages of concern for all batteries. To the extent that this is not a how-to video, I'll share with you my mistakes because I didn't do my homework correctly. The Trojan T105RE battery needs a float voltage which happens to be 13.2 volts. Then it needs what they call a bulk or boost voltage which is 14.8 volts. As a lead acid battery, in addition to those two voltages, it needs an equalization voltage of 15.5 volts. And I discovered that the Renogy 40 amp MPPT charge controller did not support the proper equalization voltage. That charge controller would only equalize with 14.8. And when I called the Trojan Battery Company, which by the way is an excellent company for customer support, I've been on the phone with them two, three hours and that's a conservative estimate. They answer the phone, they answer the questions, they're very helpful. But anyway, Trojan said 14.8 is not going to do it for equalization, so I had to go back to the drawing board and find a charge controller that supported the three voltages that I needed. And I came up here with the Xantrex, and I found that the Xantrex C series allows you to manually select the voltages for what you need based on your battery and battery chemistry. With the magic of editing, I'll insert a screenshot from the manual where you can see here these two potentiometers. One is for the float and one is for the bulk voltage. I was able to set the float voltage to match exactly what I needed for the Trojan battery. And then I was able to set the boost or bulk voltage for exactly what I needed for the Trojan. Now the equalization voltage in the Xantrax charge controller adds one volt to the bulk voltage. You can't actually set the equalization voltage. So I have this charge controller here set for 14.8 volts for boost or bulk charge and when I go into equalization mode it'll put out 15.8 volts. And I call Trojan battery and they said that was fine for equalization. It would not damage the battery. So this is the charge controller that I found that will actually support my battery and battery chemistry and match the voltages that I need. The Renogy charge controller would not do that. I did a little aftermarket modification to my charge controller and my disconnect up there, inspired by the Tin Hat Ranch Solar Series videos. 
where I got these little LED voltmeters from Amazon for five bucks and actually punched holes in the plate covers there and connected that. So what I have here internally is the solar panel leads come down from the attic into the ceiling there and I'm going to dress the drywall up and dress that up a little bit into an AC or pool pump voltage disconnect switch. It's not a breaker in there that lid just comes off and there's a bladed plug that you pull out and that disconnects the power and across those leads I have that voltmeter connected so looking up there I know I'm getting 19.5 volts out of the solar panels. The solar panel comes down here and feeds into the bottom of the charge controller and then the charge controller has an output of 13.4 volts to the batteries and the little green light there if you can see it is solid telling me the battery is charged so now that the battery is charged this charge controller is in the float voltage mode where I set that now it's 13.4 I have to tweak it a little bit but it should be 13.2 13.3 for the Trojans and again I can go back later when I have a digital volt voltmeter and tweak that pot to match the exact float voltage that I need and I can also do the same for the boost of the bulk voltage. So as I discussed previously with the three different voltages you want to watch out for when you select a charge controller here's my charge controller in boost or bulk mode putting out 14.9 volts so that's my solar system probably not the best video I ever made a lot of pieces and a lot of moving parts here and of course a lot of mistakes made but to summarize I have a 160 watt panel with the plans of adding a second panel in the next two weeks running into a AC or pool pump disconnect switch there's not breakers in there it's just a plug you pull to break the power they're going to be wired in parallel coming down here into this charge controller charge controller goes to the crawl space which goes to the battery box charges the batteries the battery back feeds back into the crawl space to power the inverter the inverter will eventually be wired to an outlet that's outside below the generator transfer switch which will allow me the option to plug in a generator or my solar system into that manual transfer switch here and I can selectively choose which circuits I want to run on my alternative power sources. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with the long overdue video on my solar system here at the retreat location. Bye guys.